to episode 5 of Law and Batting Order. I'm your host, Tony Iliacostas. Here are some quick hits from the past week. Unfortunately, sports are not all about fun and games. On Thursday, Canadian freestyle skier Sarah Burke passed away after fighting for her life for nearly 9 days. Burke injured herself on January 10th after falling on her head during a training session in Utah. Burke entered into cardiac arrest and suffered irreversible damage to her brain due to lack of oxygen and blood after cardiac arrest. Sarah Burke won the gold medal four times in the Winter X Games and won the Freestyle World Ski Championship in 2005. Burke was only 29 when she passed away. Our hearts and prayers here at Law and Batting Order go out to the Burke family. If you're a Texas Rangers fan, you have to be happy. On Wednesday, Japanese pitching sensation Yu Darvish signed a six-year, $60 million deal with the 2011 AL champs, and he was formally introduced to the media on Friday. Darvish's career stats while playing in Japan include 93 wins, 38 losses, a 1.99 career ERA, and 1,250 strikeouts, and the kid's only 25. It should be interesting how he anchors the Rangers' rotation now that he likely succeeds C.J. Wilson as the ace of the staff after Wilson left the Rangers to join the L.A. Angels. And then there were four. Last Sunday, the Patriots torched Tebow and the Broncos in an ugly game while the Ravens took advantage of the Houston Texans. The Ravens and Patriots will face each other on Sunday for the AFC title and a trip to the Super Bowl. But while the AFC Divisional playoff games were fun to watch, it was nothing compared to the NFC Divisional games. The 49ers and Saints took leads back and forth in the final minutes of the game, but the catch three occurred when Niners QB Alex Smith threw a laser shot to tight end Vernon Davis with just seconds to go to lock a win for the 49ers over the Saints. Meanwhile, Aaron Rodgers did not show up against the Giants as Big Blue pummeled the pack and head on to San Fran for a possible trip to Indy. These should be some very fun games, and just to hop on the bandwagon, I'm predicting a rematch of the 2008 Super Bowl Giants versus Patriots. Today's Order in the Court will cover statutory interpretation and mens rea. This week, Chicago Bears wide receiver Sam Hurd will plead not guilty during his arraignment after being arrested on December 2011 for federal drug conspiracy and drug possession charges. Hurd was involved in a sting operation with an undercover agent and confidential informant on December 14, 2011 after he tried to arrange a deal to purchase 5 to 10 kilograms of cocaine and 1,000 pounds of marijuana per week for her to sell and distribute. The issue at hand in the case of Sam Hurd is this. Based on the statute provided in the criminal complaint filed in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Texas, could Sam Hurd be found guilty under the statute that he allegedly violated? The criminal complaint paints a very neat condensed rule accusing Sam Hurd of specific drug charges. The complaint, which is available in the link below this video, states that Hurd violated Title 21 of the U.S. Code, Sections 841A1, B1, B22, and 846, which charges the defendant that he knowingly, intentionally, and unlawfully combined, conspired, confederated, and agreed together and with other person known and unknown to possess with the intent to distribute 500 grams or more of a mixture or substance containing a detectable amount of cocaine, a controlled substance. The first step in statutory interpretation is as follows. Is there a mens rea term contained in the statute? Mens rea is a mental state of mind necessary to commit a crime. Unlike the actus reus, which is a voluntary act, mens rea lays the foundation of the state of mind that is necessary to cause a social harm. There are four mens rea terms as per the Model Penal Code, Section 2.02, .02, purposely, knowingly, reckless, and negligent. To act purposely is a conscious objective to achieve a particular result or engage in a particular conduct. To act knowingly is to be aware with practical certainty that a prohibited conduct or prohibited result will occur. Recklessness is simply a conscious disregard of a substantial and unjustifiable risk that is a gross deviation from the standard of a reasonable person. Finally, negligence is an unawareness of a substantial and unjustifiable risk that is a gross deviation from the standard of a reasonable person. The next step is to look at the statute and see if any of these mens rea terms are contained therein. If they are, the crime is a specific intent crime, meaning that there is a mens rea term assigned to the statute which makes the crime punishable. If there isn't, the crime is a general intent crime. In such a case, a general intent crime imputes a mens rea term of at least recklessness. If the statute is lacking any of these four mens rea terms, you must impute a mens rea term of at least recklessness. With that said, 
The statute that Sam Heard violated would constitute a specific intent crime. The statute contains two mens rea terms. The first is knowingly and the second is intentionally, that is to act purposely and knowingly. Under this statute, it is the government's burden to prove that it was Sam Heard's purpose or goal to purchase over 500 grams of cocaine and sell it on a weekly basis. Furthermore, under the definition of knowingly, the government has to show that Heard was aware that the purchase and sale of cocaine is a prohibited conduct. The statute clearly indicates that possessing with the intent to sell over 500 grams of cocaine could be punishable by law as cocaine is a controlled substance that is prohibited under 21 U.S.C. section 841b1b22. In this case, the facts in the complaint show that Sam Heard wanted to purchase 5 to 10 kilograms of cocaine from the confidential informant every week with the intent to sell it, and the government can argue that Sam Heard meets the mens rea necessary to be found guilty. While there are possible defenses that Heard's attorneys could bring up to counter the government's strategy, my knowledge of criminal defense goes beyond the scope of this matter, and I am unfortunately not in a position to necessarily opine on possible defenses for Mr. Heard. However, given what I've discussed about statutory interpretation and mens rea, I believe the government has an overwhelming case against Sam Heard, and he could potentially be found guilty of these charges beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the show. Leave all your comments down below and be sure to visit Law and Batting Order at lawandbattingorder.com as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, have a great week, guys.